I hate puppies. It's a good podcast. I feel threatened. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Inside the Pallet House. I hope everybody out there is staying safe, doing the best they can in this, uh, well, this flat-out crazy time that we're dealing with. We do have a little sense of normalcy, though. We have a visit today from an old friend that we haven't talked to since this summer. We have uh, Sean from Nectar Sunglasses in the house. How are you, man? What's up, guys? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Doing well, man. We're glad to have you on. I'm sure this is a uh, absolutely crazy time for you too, considering you're in the uh, retail game. Yes, uh, you cut out a little bit. I missed uh, majority of that question. I was asking about the uh, tigers you've been keeping. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't know they were so cheap. Dude, is that the number? That was the number one takeaway I had from the Tiger King. I was like, you got to be kidding me. It's only $4,000 for a tiger. What the hell have I been doing with my money all this time? It's insane. It's crazy. I don't know if you guys, did you guys watch it, the whole thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I couldn't do it after he put that meat on his pizzeria pizza. It was like a oh, meat lover's pizza. Bad. Yeah, he was serving the rotted Walmart meat on the pizzas, which actually is a pretty good cough-saving measure. (laughs) I mean, he did a good job, you know, making that call, but putting on human food, and there's a snow crab leg on there mixed in with some pepperoni. (laughs) (laughs) It was done well. Dude, back to the tiger cost, like... My neighbor literally, he just bought a purebred Maine Coon for like sixteen hundred bucks. That's just a cat. Like, yeah. And you're and you're selling like tiger cubs for like two grand or whatever it was. Like, how is that a thing? It certainly what, changed changed my perspective on how much a cat's really worth. Because a Maine Coon for sixteen hundred bucks, you're halfway to a fucking tiger. Yeah. What kind of cat is that? When because when we moved here to Charleston, we we adopted these two neighbors kittens and i have a love hate with them they're outside which is nice but we had a neighbor who was one a drug dealer too he came up to my door and said he had like some sort of african cat it wasn't like a lion or, or a tiger it was like a little it was big like a bobcat size oh like a and, like a 30 pound cat or something like an, yeah. os- an ocelot maybe something like yeah. that it was illegal to have it and uh he got on the news one day because it got out but he asked if my cats wanted to if, you, if we could breed with his cat and I'm like, dude, they're both maya- males and they're, they're neutered, so sorry. No, um, it doesn't some- It doesn't matter. An ocelot could fuck that male pregnant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you want your cats to come over and maybe die? No, I don't. Yeah. Dude, what is yeah, it with you- drug dealers and big cats? And exotic animals. Like, if it's not a big cat, it's like a freaking 30-foot python or so, like an alligator or something like yeah, you go. Did you, see the, did you see the? Um, they just released another episode of the Tiger King. It's like a talk show re- after a reaction type of thing. They said that Joe Exotic was he was actually scared of the the tigers, and the only ones that he would ever film around were the ones they're either drugged up or sedated, or one was blind or something. Well, that adds up. If I'm drugged up and sedated, I want my tigers to be in. The, you know, I want to be able to to bond with them. And that dude it is also, a junkie. It also it also adds up that he's scared of tigers. I ain't faulting him for that. No, that's actually the most normal <laughs> thing I've heard about Joe Exotic. I was like, oh, you have a healthy fear of tigers. That I get. <laughs> that makes sense. I want to see that. That just came out. That uh, the guy from uh, Community was the host of that, right? Yeah. It seems like anybody could have done that if you just reached out to him, which is kind of a missed opportunity for. Me. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. Damn. They're wide open celebrities right now. I did hear Carol Baskin say she was quite surprised by the angle they took. And I was like, hmm, what'd you think they were going to do? Crazy right. lady. <laughs> yeah. The, the crazy broad who killed her husband. What? Mm-hmm. Uh, you're shocked they took the uh, husband angle? <laughs> Skip over my husband. Let's talk more about Joe Exotic. Like, the, the, who cares about the husband that 
just disappeared off the face of the earth. The multi-million dollar you know, yeah. the millionaire husband that disappeared. And now she le- lives with all these cats and has a man chained up on a leash. <laughs> it's a very weird situation, man. To say the least. That was- I'm jealous. Like, how does she find two multi-million dollars? Like, she's not that attractive. And she finds two multi-millionaire dudes that she can treat like that. Joe Exotic finds two straight dudes he can convince to be his husbands. Like, where are all these people that are so easily convinced to do these things? It's tigers, man. It's the same reason that Sean's drug dealer neighbor had an ocelot floating around because people love that stuff. They love exotic cats. Well, that's what that doc guy said, and I guess he's right. I mean, he's got like six hot wives, like something about it they aren't just hot dude they were smoking like that didn't yeah. add up at all and they're like sleeping in the barn <laughs> blown away. no money yeah not getting paid like 50 bucks a day or something he's like she came here when she was 17 and no one has to question that like wait what <laughs> <laughs> is it that the truth damn did you guys do anything good for easter or did you just uh lay around what was quarantine Easter like? Uh, I went to a cabin this weekend and I came back on Easter. Um, I don't know. It's, it's different. Like we don't have kids or anything, so we don't celebrate it as much. Well, it's a religious, our, it's a religious holiday, not a child's holiday, but that's neither here oh, nor there. <laughs> oh yeah. It's yeah. It's real religious. I mean, I didn't go to it's, church. It's, so. it's, it's mostly a child's holiday. It's mostly about the, Man sized bunny hiding chicken eggs. That was also, yeah, and it's also turned into straight little Christmas. Like kids are just straight getting like bikes and fucking playstations. It's crazy. Yeah, it's out of it's out of hand now. So you yeah, guys just went exciting. to a cabin and chilled, huh? Yeah, we have like our corn team buddies that we they're our neighbors, good friends, and we just like. We're both not hanging out with people, so they'll come. We'll walk the dogs together, and they'll come over and ha- we'll do like game night or just break up the, you know, monotony of staying in by ourselves. And um, one of them, his family, all grew up in Hemingway, which is uh, thirty minutes from Georgetown, so it's inland a bit. And his parents uh-huh. got have like eight hundred acres. So we stayed on like a cabin out there that they built. We went fishing and ridden around the woods and. Um, just drank aggressively, so it was nice to get away. <laughs> yeah, that sounds isn't about that the right. truth? Yeah, we've my... been straight drinking non stop over here. Yeah, what did you do anything, Troy? Went to the lake third weekend in a row, got some projects done. Um, enjoyed the weather, it didn't rain, it was cold, but uh, it was sunny. Rode the golf car, did some projects, built a bridge across the creek down there, and so that's not bad. Things that, in there. That's no, a pro- it was awesome. That's productive. I had the exact opposite Easter. We literally did like some catering from some place down the way. Like my wife went and picked it up. We did a Zoom meeting with the family because that's all I do is Zoom meetings now. And then <laughs> she ended up being like, "Hey, I've got these two bottles of bubbly. Like, let's make mimosas." And I was like, "All right, you know, why not?" So we had that. And then she's like. Hey, I've got a third bottle of bubbly. And now I'm like, what is happening right now? <laughs> like it's aggressive to do too. But all of a sudden that third happened, it was over, dude. I literally sat in my yard in a chair with some nectars on and just hid my eyes from the universe and just drank at that point, just beer after beer and listened to music, entire concerts of music, like put on a whole Coldplay concert and then like put on a whole nother concert and just pissed away the day. It you was, were in a bad spot. listening to Coldplay. It's, it's not a healthy way to start. You know, you start <laughs> listening to that and it's all like, I'm sad and I'm slow. And then you're like, yeah, you should crack that other bottle of wine. <laughs> it wasn't you great. F- you had fix you on repeat. <laughs> just a tear tear streaming down my face having a good old time ely welcome to the party man how are you same old appreciate it yeah good to have you here man that's awesome all of a sudden yeah. i saw the little invite on the bottom like hey can ely come in i was like yes 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 he can we don't know what's up with Stu. we're hoping he's all right we shall see 
How was your Easter, Ely? Probably sidetracked. Anything? Uneventful. I worked, I cleaned my pond, like little koi pond thing. Ah, yeah. what's that entail? Oh, it was miserable. You know, knee deep in soot and, you know, Muck. I got like 20 some fish. So taking them out, you know, the water's so dirty. So, you know, scrubbing it, power washing it. I'd replace the motor and the pump. So I had to do some underground plumbing. It was just horrible. That's- so you literally pulled each fish out. And then, like, drained it, power washed it, like, repaired it, fresh water back in. That does sound miserable. Yeah, it, it sucked. What kind of fish? <laughs> What's that? What kind of fish are in there? Queen? Mostly just goldfish. Gotcha. Yeah. How big is it? I would say it's maybe 700 gallons. It's probably eight, nine feet diameter, something like that. And then it's got, like, a three-tier waterfall type of thing. Nice. Your fish gets taken by birds of prey. Yeah, so they will sometimes. <laughs> um, but we have I got a couple rocks in there they like to hide under and they were like you know, when the water was filled with algae, they were straight, but now that it's clear they could be in trouble. So put a net across the top. I see people do you know, that. No, it's funny you mentioned that I was gonna I'm looking into doing that just because the fall, especially now that I did it, it's all clean and fresh and awesome. So keep I'm the super crud out of it, yeah. about it. I wanna keep it clean. So I've been looking at vacuums and nets, the whole nine, man. So. And you didn't install this. When you bought the house, there was a pond there. Yeah, there was a pond there. And, it, you know, yeah, it now had it- two pumps and this filter. And I didn't know how it was plumbed. So that was half of what I had to do was figure out how it was plumbed and what the hell the dude did. So that's uh, the best. Now you've got a problem, something you can yeah, deal with. Someone exactly. else, someone else loved fish. Enjoy. Right. <laughs> See, so he probably wasn't a drug dealer. We were talking about how drug dealers always have exotic animals, and how. What's up with that? I don't know. We can't figure it out. But drug dealers or super weird dudes. <laughs> well, those things usually go hand yeah. in hand. You're like, I'm having a hard <laughs> no, time. No, but making there's friends. like non-drug dealers that are like, "Hey, man, I got tons of snakes and spiders in my house," and you're like, "That dude's just not right. Totally normal. <laughs> just hella video games in the basement." Yeah. <laughs> One of my employees, his roommate, Dave, has like a, a mini python for some reason. No no idea why. Yeah. And like their house, when you walk in, like he's got the windows blacked out like a drug dealer would. But he has a movie theater screen up so he can play video games. And last time I was really there, I saw it. <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah. There was like, like chicken nuggets that you make when you're six. Like yeah. A bunch of them, like 50 like, of them. I think they're still... That demo is buying most of the chain wallets, I think. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. He's like, hey, bro, can I make you something? We're down to just Stegosaurus nuggets, but yeah, they're still good. Not as good as the T-Rex. Nothing makes me sleep like a baby, like knowing there's, you know, a dozen snakes and deadly tarantulas, you know, in the next room over. And uh, okay, honestly, like, did that ever get you a piece too? Like, did it ever get you some? <laughs> right. Like, you're at the bar, no chicks. Like, I'm going with this dude. He's got serious lizards. They met at yeah. Hot Topic. So. Yeah. Serious lizards. Right. Yeah. <laughs> An iguana. That's oh a great guy. You might as well rip my panties off now. That's a great band name. We're gonna go see Serious Lizards tonight at eight thirty. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Exotic is next. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. That is so true though. A tiger will get you laid. A tarantula will not. No. Don't get a yeah. tarantula. Right. You want to watch me feed him? No. <laughs> no, I don't. Exactly. <laughs> and if you if you do find a chick that loves tarantulas and you break up with her, she'll find you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh shit. So Sean, man, I know we haven't we haven't really gotten to talk about uh, why you're on. You guys have a big sale coming up, right? Yeah, we do the 420 sale. We do 42 percent off, and um, it was kind of like a a joke a few years ago, three years ago when we did it. We were like, let's just do a random sale because we always miss on um, Fourth of July. It just never does well, and I think it's because everyone's already on their vacation. They're already partying. You've tried doing leading up to that national flag day and do like kind of that whole push. But uh, the 421, I think people just get it. And it's a big, you know, it's a big sale. 42% off is our, our biggest sale besides Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Uh, so every year we just kind of keep putting more into it. And this year we're doing a big giveaway every day until just trying to get engagement leading up to it. But um, 
Yeah, so we're going to do early release the 19th and then the 20th. So this is the sale you use to raise all the money to buy exotic pets because it's the 420 sale. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're hoping for at least two tigers if we can get yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A couple boas. Yeah. yeah. Throw in a boa. I'm, that's it. Well, you yeah. say you say leading up to the release because I, I know that you guys have a new a new logo that you've you've just changed. So is this the big release for all the new logo gear? Is that what this is leading up to? A little bit. I think it's um, we always try to re- release things during high traffic and we're doing a lot of stuff, but it was tough to release a new logo just in general. We wanted to do a big push to do a story around it, but we had so much inventory that was with the old logo and then new inventory that has a new logo. It's really hard to do a clean, you know, it's Break. not like the McRib is back and all of a sudden you're selling <laughs> fucking McRibs. Uh, yeah. It's a process. So we knew you we got a McRib. Yeah, you try it. It's just a hard one to phase in and out of. So it's like new packaging. There's always going to be the old stuff kind of left over and the new stuff. So we just phased into it. We slowly released it online and changed the website over. Um, I don't know. That, it was a tough one. We went through a process of like redoing the logo to as part of like kind of a rebrand and, and polishing off some edges. And a designer came in and basically ripped our logo to pieces and saying that the N didn't make sense. The E and the C were smashed together. It didn't make sense from a design element standpoint. It was tough for me to like move on to. Didn't you, new- didn't you make that logo yourself? Yeah. We, we like designed it together. My old partner and I, and you know, we thought it looked good. And um, at the end of the day, like I wanted to do some changes in general and a lot of brands go through a logo evolution. And this one was tough because we wanted to have an icon. So if you just take the N it looks like New Balance. The E and the C by itself looks like Gucci. And the A just never quite did it for me. It just, it was hard to kind of like take that logo and make an icon out of it. So we were looking for ways to expand the brand, simplify it a little bit. And now it's a bit more welcoming and just designed well, which feels good now. But it's funny we'll do- that you say that though, because I've always thought your logo was, was badass. So the fact that you had these kind of like reservations about it, it's kind of, kind of shocking to me because i've always thought it was it was cool but i've seen the new logo and i in some respects it seems more approachable and i guess that may be what you're what you're talking about because put it up here it's still the same like it's still very yeah, much so you wanted to yeah it's still it's you know i wanted it i said i don't want to change this thing and make it drastic and typically if you look at a version one and version two do a most goes from Starbucks to Exxon to all these companies that take that leap. Usually it's dramatic and different. This one, you know, I wanted to retain some of the characteristics of the original to keep it um, similar, but just a little bit cleaner. Um, so we have a whole like new brand guideline deck that goes through color palettes and, and a bunch of really nice stuff that we needed for a long time. And this guy really came in and determined, like we went through core values and, um, built avatars, if you will, from like 18 to 24 year olds, 25 to 34 and so on. And, and how are we going to talk to those people? Because everyone uses things differently, right? Like um, a 40 year old woman is going to use Pinterest and Facebook differently than an 18 year old girl would. So really understanding those nuances of our brand, how we need to speak to them and speak to them on different channels and how do we target them? It all came back to this, let's make a brand guideline, which we've had versions of, but it was never this dialed in. And when it came to the logo part, I was really kind of pushing back. I was like, you know, I kind of like this one. I don't want to change this. And it just felt like I, I had some other people that I really trust and respect that were like, look, it's going to be good. Like, let this guy do what he does best. He's, he's, trust the process. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and it got to a point where I was like, hey, Kyle, can we add like a little mountain in there? He's like, dude, just stop. Like, <laughs> just I'm, I'm going to protect you from yourself. Right. Um, and, and I had to let it go and it, it felt good. We printed, I printed it out and looked at it for two weeks and I was like, you know what? This feels good. The more I look at it, the more I liked it. Um, and it is, it's more welcoming. It's more it, design wise. It's really easy to put that on other things. Um, our logo, if you make it too small, like on a t-shirt or something, it kind of gets bunched up and a little bit hard to read. So would it be safe that this, the old logo is more masculine, like with the big, hard, like N at the front, the big capital N now that, that having that lowercase N, it almost softens the logo a little bit. 
Oh, my internet's going to shit, isn't it? Because you guys don't hear anything exactly. I'm saying. Well, everyone else can hear <laughs> exactly. me just fine because I got whatever the, you were saying about that. I, lower case in. Yeah. I was saying I was saying that I think that the the capital N is very much like masculine, whereas I think that lowercase N it softens it up a little bit and makes it a little more approachable. I think that's why I feel like it's approachable because it works for both. Would that be right? Accurate? I think yeah. Early on, like you know, I have I have photos of us looking at our old logo with a lowercase n and versus uppercase. And at the time we both felt like it just felt stronger with a uppercase. Um, but from a typography standpoint, when you're looking at it, they either all need to be uppercase or they all need to be lowercase. It just doesn't quite make sense from a design standpoint. And it was confusing is what this guy said in a way. And uh, I, I get that. And I think, you know, when my old partner was in it, it was definitely pushed towards more of like a bro type of brand, which, at the end of the day, when I, I really like to look at the data and women are buying our product 80% more than guys, not, not holistically, but they spend more money with us and we do have more female options. I've kind of opened it up to that world and they're the ones who are buying stuff. And I, I don't want them to land on our website and feel like they're in the wrong place. And, and not that that N is going to do the trick, but I think I just wanted to make it a little bit more welcoming than just what it was. And um, this is, what we landed on. So hoping it goes well. No, it makes sense though. It's a little less barstool sports and more like for everybody. Right. Just wanted to add like, um, like add some maturity to the brand because we've come a long way. And it was like that time, I think to make that switch and, and, you know, shift gears a tiny bit and, and knowing that we're making stuff now that's more, a little bit less aggressive and, and more so, you know, this fits our brand. And now we have like a real guideline based on the brand guideline to like stick to that, that everything we produce is for these reasons. And not because we come up with some random idea. I'm like, Oh, let's do this crazy fucking pair that really no one's going to wear except one random dude who drives a yellow Mustang might wear it. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Or like Miata. That. I don't know. You mean Brendan? Whoa, whoa. We're doing Miata talk now. I didn't know you had sweet, sweet sunglasses that were made for racing fast cars. I'm in. We don't. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I saw on Reddit one time, and I can't and can't unsee it. But the Seven Eleven logo, like where it says Eleven, all the letters are capital except the N, and it's just like I never noticed it. The the N is lowercase, and you're just like now my mind's blown. Like that's crazy. And now you want to go there more. <laughs> that's right. I always like Seven yeah. Elevens. Um, but yeah, people put a lot of people put a lot of thought in and Brendan and I when we started ITPH and we're trying to come up with a logo, like I mean, it's hard. It's hard to come up with a cool logo and a, a logo can make or break you, you know. It's apparently you get a we good should looking redo logo, ours. people will buy the buy the merch without even caring what you're hawking because it looks cool on a hat or on a shirt. For sure. Yeah, if you guys Google like there's a lot of companies and, and it's it's hard to tell now. Um, there's actually a really cool Netflix series that's called Abstract. It's about designers from the guy who designed the Nike Air Jordans from number three all the way to like the 20th and a lady who does typography, stage design. And one recent one was a guy who redesigned the, the Instagram logo. And it's like we, you know, from my perspective, we changed something on the website. <clears throat> there's a couple thousand people that I will see it a day. This guy changed the logo of Instagram where a billion people were affected by it immediately and like shit on him for two years because of it. And now it's like, it's amazing. You don't even think about it, but those little changes, you know, from our perspective, it, it wasn't that big of an impact, but um, it's pretty amazing when you look at companies like a Starbucks, theirs has changed over the past 50 years. Not dramatically, but some of them, the first couple are pretty dramatic. Well, it's funny, though, because Troy was talking about buying a flag tonight, or he said he was flying his old flag. And I was like, no, 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 you can't. You got to go get the new logo on a flag. Like, you got to get out there and get the new one. And his point was, no, it shows I'm old school. I've got, like, the original logo. I've been here, you know, forever. So I Retro. guess the, there is going to be some of that, right, where some people are going to take pride in the old logo because they always were supporters. And then you're going to have people who just want the new logo. So you're going to, you're going to have to wade through that, I guess. Yeah. It's a weird time. We're going to have to just keep our head down and move forward. And, you know, I, I think there is some old school kind of elements to it that <clears throat> now we can almost pitch that these are retro 
you know, products that have that old logo. Um, it's a, it's a collector's item, if you will, at this point. Well, I love the fact that the logo isn't a total deviation. Like you can still identify it as nectar as soon as you see it. I mean, it's still very much there. In fact, the A, the elements of the A have stayed and now they've carried over to the other side of the logo. Right. Really, we really wanted to put a, um, <clears throat> the, the, the N needed something about it that was different than just a regular N. It's got that little bit of curve that was pulled from the, the A, from the old logo. And we have an icon. We haven't really put it out yet. It's, it's, it's actually here on the, on the snow goggles. Let's see. Do you think you're going to get pushback for using Comic Sans? <laughs> it's not light blue, so. <laughs> no, I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> well, they were going to go wingding, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Times New Roman. <laughs> so you may have already touched on this, but have you seen an uptick since everyone's been sitting at home surfing the internet? Yeah, we have. I mean, it was, it's been nice that it's hard it's hard to promote like a lifestyle brand when people's lifestyles have changed dramatically in a weird weird way unless they um, really want to get out and do that lifestyle yeah. yeah yeah but you also sell blue light blockers so i mean wouldn't those actually be the perfect nectar sunglass for sitting your ass at home and staring at a screen yeah we've been we've been kind of pivoting and pushing that a bit harder and it's been nice like those things have been doing well for us and um you know, at the end of the day, I think, you know, it's kind of weird. And if you want me to get into the whole business side of it, how it's affected everyone's business, you know, restaurants and ours in particular, our retail has dropped off a cliff. I mean, there's no stores open. We have 350 stores that order every month and they're gone. Um, oh. So I, I don't know how that's going to, you know, our online can't quite sustain our business and, and why we're putting a lot of effort into the 420 and pivoting money towards online advertising and, and, and pushing that the best we can, but we've had to make changes in the back half and, and hope that the world comes back to normal here soon. Well, you know what's you were the, you were the original canary in the coal mine for me about the coronavirus because it was like months ago, I was on the phone with you and we were talking about, about something. And I, I had, I had actually made a comment that I wanted, I wanted you to make more bandanas because I love the old nectar bandanas. I think those things are cool. Now, in retrospect, boy, those would sell like crazy because they're just face masks waiting to happen. So I, I was ahead of the curve. I just didn't know it. But you had said to me, the odds of me getting a sample out of one of my uh, you know, manufacturers are pretty slim right now because China on the whole is shut down. And I was like, what do you mean they're shut down? He, you said, no, literally, like, there's nothing happening in China. Everybody's at home. And I didn't realize at the time that it had it had, had that kind of impact on China. And that's what you said. You said, no, absolutely not. There is nothing happening there. I can't get a hold of anybody. Everybody's working from their home. There's there's nothing happening here. And you know, fast forward a month. I can't get any bats. <laughs> All the bats are on lock. But that was that was interesting for me because that was the first time I'd heard it. And then sure enough, you know, this this everything over the next last two months, you know, rolled out. But that was the first time I'd really heard about the impact. And I was thinking at that time, the biggest impact we're going to have is Q3 and four of this year when everything's backlogged and prices go up and things are crazy. And um, now now obviously we're in a very different situation today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're doing pretty good over there, um, considering what they went through. But yeah, when we talked, <clears throat> I don't know, I, I've been on top of this thing because I talked to China every night. So I knew that it was an issue for them and they were really, really scared. There was a lot of my guys that, you know, were saying that they're the numbers. They had no idea they're faking it to the United States, just like how we are now. No one knows how many people really have it because there's not enough tests. And they were in that same situation mid-January. Um, they're just lucky that as a communist country, they can shut down the, their, all the businesses and not be affected because the government owns all the businesses and all the land. So it didn't affect anybody the way it would here. Um, but no, I think, you know, our, our factories are back up. They had to go through a 14 day quarantine process. And most of the factories that I work with are huge. So they live there and stay at the play, the factory. So unfortunately the timing was bad because they had left for Chinese new year. They all, travel really far. They go back to their home villages 
you know, 10, 15 hours away, some of them. And when they were coming back was the issue. They would have been back up and running a lot quicker, but they had to come back into their cities and then go through a 14 day quarantine to be able to come back into the factory to start working again. So now that they're back, it's been, I mean, they're, they're full steam ahead. It's just now the whole world is now struggling and, and we're the ones who are like, Hey, I'm going to back off my order because I don't know what the fuck's going on. I'm not going to press forward on like aggressive summer orders when I'm kind of pulling back on some things to gauge the next few months. So it's just been a weird, I don't know. It seems like a dream that I can't quite wake up from and, and taking it day by day at this point. Damn. Well, the 420 sale is probably a pretty big deal, man. <laughs> so prior so. to, what was your split as far as retail and online ballpark? We do about, about 50, 50. Oh, so okay. like, you know, I, you can't quite carry the business, but we're, we're making adjustments and, and online's picked up about 15%. Okay. And which is normal, like not normal, but like we're coming into the season, if you will, for eyewear and sunglasses. So um, we actually launched prescription eyewear, which is new for us and still kind of easing into it. it it's there. And, and I know that that can help carry us. If we can really dial in some ads that start converting, it, it's a huge revenue stream that we haven't quite tapped into yet. And it, they, like our world is Plano sunglasses or Plano eyewear, which is sunglasses that aren't prescription, but the real money is in prescription. People's eyes go bad by the time they're 30 and they need solutions for it. And, and we partner with the company out of Atlanta that, um, Actually, my brother's working with now Robertson Optical. They've been in business for 65 years and do a great job. And um, we're, so we're trying to push into that world as well of being competitive with Warby Parker um, in that price point. I would assume you guys get a lot of repeat business on the online, but the new customers really are from the store because it's always nice to physically handle and try on a pair of something like glasses. Yeah. And then once you once you try them on, you're like, okay, now I'm going to the online and I'm just going to start knocking it out. I don't have to find the surf shop or because I've seen Nectar in a, in a lot of different places. Um, but I know once I've tried one on, I know what I like and I'm just going right to the online. Yeah, it's always been this weird. I don't know if you guys remember, if I, maybe four years ago when retail was like, dying if you will like people were concerned that like sports chalet closed 135 doors and yeah at that moment i was like shit should we pull out of retail i don't know if this is the best for us and um some they just weren't ready for the amazons of the world and the, the internet to come up i think they were so old school in the way they operated that they couldn't react to people ordering online and they failed but now retail has like been really strong for us because to your point troy it's brand awareness. People want to go in and like try them on. And at the end of the day, our product is like a very intimate purchase. We've been at events and like a girl will come up and put them on her face and they won't even touch her nose and she'll take them off and be like, no, this, this doesn't feel good. Like, Holy shit. You didn't even look in a mirror yet. Like just <laughs> give it a chance. Um, so, it, so that's why we're, we're, we like to stay in retail because people do want to go out there and try them on as well as brand awareness also. Oh yeah, welcome, up, Stu? welcome to the party, Stu. <laughs> What's up, guys? Sorry about that. Work was a little crazy. Well, Stu, what? Stu wasn't here. <laughs> I didn't even notice. <laughs> Stu's the only motherfucker in Virginia in a collared shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so I know he was at work. That's a fact. <sighs> didn't get Pornhub to shut down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How's things treating you? We're good, man. We're good. We're, We're good. 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 We're just trying okay. to uh, wrap our heads around the reality of the retail situation right now for Nectar Sunglasses, which apparently is uh, not great, but that's because retail is shot. There's no, there's nobody shopping in stores. There's nobody out there. The good news is they've got a new logo and they've got a new look <laughs> and they're, they're pushing it right now. No, he's just Sean, it wasn't like that. <laughs> he's like, what do you no. mean? <laughs> but I mean, you do have something to celebrate right now. And, and yeah. you're, you're out there pushing a new, a new, a new look and it looks damn good. So there's a, there's a sunglass. The last time you were in here that we were talking about the last time you were physically in the pallet house and they were the new ones that uh, are more for boating and they've got kind of that, that the rubber on the, on the arms and they kind of really hold to your face really well. And I noticed that that particular style and I, it, I'm, I'm, 
drawing a blank on the name of that. What what the what tide. is it? Which one is it? It's called the Tide. Yeah, so the Tides, I noticed you just came out with in the black frame with the blue lens, kind of like the old Zizos. So I'm pretty psyched about that. And if I look online, it looks like those have the new logo on them. So it looks they like do. So are those all the ones in the shop? Are those new logos on those? I would say about 80% are new logos. Because I think, oh, there it is, too. Because I want to get my hands on a, on a pair of those tides in the black with the blue lens with the, uh, with the new logo. So if I go there on 420, what kind of deal are you having on 420? Because that's, that's the sunglass I'm picking up. So it's 42% off. They'll be about $31. That's what I'm talking about. The ITPH code, which is our go-to here, is 30% off, so I just don't know which one to use. I can't, I can't figure out which one's better. <laughs> I'm not good with math. Sean, are you all still doing the uh, minimum purchase free shipping? And what's that now, if you're still doing it? Yeah, so we're doing free shipping over 60. I think that's typically what we do um, nice. all year. Um, so that, that's always just live running. We'll be doing, we'll, we're going to test a few different things. We'll split test. We, we basically send half the traffic to one landing page and the other half to another, and we see which deals do better. So we'll, we'll do a free like mystery pair, which is kind of a way for us to push some stuff that we have too much inventory of. Not that it's a bad product. We just, whether we overordered or it's, it's weird. Some things that we launch like the tide collection, it just continues to sell and outsell some other styles that for whatever reason they're. To me, that's our, our my favorite product that we make is the Tide and, and the one that I put the most time into developing. And now it's like, shit, I should do that for every fucking pair that I make. <laughs> you know? I, I mean, I do love those Tides, man. They're my favorite sunglasses. They're my go-to like all the time. It's either the Aviators or the Tides. And then I tend to, to wear those black and blue Zizos. But now that I see that you have the Tide and the black and blue, game on. I got a new favorite pair of sunglasses, which... I really don't need a 40th pair of nectars, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to buy them because I love those nectars, man. And the way those yeah. tides feel on my face, I kind of had that girl reaction where I try them on. I didn't even have to look at them. As soon as I put them on, I was like, that fits perfectly. Yeah, it's, it's been nice to see those things doing well. But that the mystery pair, we'll throw in some stuff. We'll say like a free mystery pair over 60 instead of free shipping and test if that does better. Usually it does because people just get another you know, that's a much bigger value add than, you know, seven bucks free ship or shipping. Yeah. Um, but it's all, I love those. I love the clicks. How are those doing for you? Which ones? The clicks, I think is what they're called. Oh, Killix. Oh, the, yeah. yeah. yeah Killix. Killix. Those do, those do really well. I mean, it's our, it, we just redesigned that wrap pair and, uh, the eight base wrap for, you know, people that have bigger heads or just want that full coverage. I hear you. I, I know. hear you. Yeah, <laughs> big fat brown I need, face. I need those for sure. Yeah, you know, even though that we're going through this weird time, and I know everyone's kind of going through it. You know, I think the end of the day, if we can push through this thing and like and survive and make this, like every day is now like it's fucking survival. And you know, we have this really big order. I don't know if I told you guys, we we landed a deal with Fab Fit Fun, which is a a women's quarterly box. They send out seasonal. Yeah. Stuff I'm sure. Yeah, wise. Sue's a member. Yeah, Sue knows. Daily. <laughs> um, they, they ordered 524,000 blue light blockers that go out in fall this year. So we have a huge order coming in. Well, it's already being produced, but it's almost like a nugget that we know from our 12 month cash flow projection that we're going to be okay. We just have to get through as unscathed as possible the next three to four months. Dude, Fab, we'll, Fab Fit Fun blew up. Because they're the I mean, ones they're, who give the full size, uh, the full size products, all kinds of different beauty products, and all kinds yeah. of different different things. Women love that. Buy the and hell try, out of it. Yeah, you know, I talked to them, and I was worried when this was happening because I thought maybe they were going to back off their already signed contract and see if they could reduce their order. But they said they've had more traffic than they've ever had because people are just home and they want new shit, and it they're doing really good. So it, it's nice to see that that's not changing and they've actually ordered two more times to add on to that order. Oh, I love uh, to hear that. We've, we've been doing the same thing. Like we've had a, a handful of listeners like sending money in on the Venmo account and I've, 
as I realized everyone was sitting home, I was like, wait a minute, we should be, we should be advertising right now on Facebook online. Like this is what we should be doing. So we've, we've leaned into that and, uh, the early results are actually pretty promising. What do you guys think about, I, I don't know. I'm not very, I don't like to be in front of the camera. I like doing podcasts and things like that. I do other podcasts, but I think I'm going to like open up and, and like do some face not, or like Instagram kind of videos of me talking about early days of Nectar, how our offices have, where they've been above Sullivan's and all the fuck ups that we've done, like the big wins we've had things that like kind of open it up to more of an intimate. I don't know. What do you guys think? Is that going to, backfired do you think people want to hear some of the stuff that like hey we shouldn't do pre-sales because we got fucked and pissed off hundreds of customers because we didn't even have the product yet um maybe I mean, not I, to that level but i think done in the right light there's always there's always people who are looking for that kind of content and understanding what's worked what hasn't worked you know my my guess would be if you could make it light and, and enjoyable or just scream a lot like Gary V you get really animated. <laughs> you know, you gotta, right. you gotta do something, but yeah, I think there's certainly a, a market for that, that kind of content. That's for sure. Well, I would think that, you know, all successful brands have, you know, you know, the, you know, the owner, the leader, the brand representative and getting to know that person helps sell in that situation. I mean, Ely and I literally watch barstool pizza reviews every time they come out. And that's literally the worst content in the world. I'm watching a dude eat a slice of pizza for eight minutes. And I'm like riveted every time it comes out. And we, we talked about this (laughs) on an episode that never went out, but he's doing frozen pizza reviews right now because he's, he's locked into his home and I'm like enjoying the shit out of watching him do frozen pizza reviews. And it's, it's has nothing to do with their brand. I mean, they're a sports brand, but I love watching this guy <laughs> review pizzas. And that, that makes, that endears me to. Yeah, the- I'd say, Sean, anything you could do that makes yourself. Good point. Well, <laughs> we got over talked there. The <laughs> net went bad or something. I don't know. I was just going to, I was going to say that anything that you can see yourself, anything that you can talk about where you can let somebody else put themselves in your shoes and makes it relatable. And they, and it's, you know, a story in a background that just, that infuses the product, you know, with the, with the client from, you know, a different angle. Right. I think there's going to be people that listen and don't listen to it, but the people that want to hear it will, will listen to those things and it won't be as that bad, but I think some people need to know that, I used to make them by hand and show them on camera. Like I still have the screwdriver and like the little magnetized thing I use to, to magnetize the tip and, and kind of show I really for me to show the evolution as well. You know, I've always wanted to put on our site, like kind of like a, you know, a timeline and say like, this is when we started. This is when we added polarization. This is when we changed the hinges to metal. And like, so people that land on our site can see the evolution that this is a pursuit. It's not, this is the product and that's it. No, it came from here and, and we've worked our way to here and we're still trying to get better. Um, and they can kind of tie in like you guys will be like, Oh shit. I remember when they were $13 and shipping was eight bucks and they were $20 shades and why we've gone from 20 bucks to 45. It's because we've added these features and added new, new things to it because we're trying to make a better product and continue to keep it in a reasonable price point. So people can kind of tie in their own kind of like, you know, they'll relate with it at some point. If I can tell some stories about how we, how we did it. I can remember those days when you were, you were working on top of a bar here in Richmond, shout out to FW Sullivan's. Hopefully uh, they weather this storm and uh, we would, I would go up there and it'd be like 11 o'clock at night and you and a couple other people would be sitting around literally making hundreds of pair of sunglasses and you had boxes full of arms and lenses and frames and you were putting them together. Cause that's back when everything was customizable. And I remember yeah. getting some horrible sunglasses. I've got a pair of, of red, white, and blue, nothing matches, but they, I wear them every 4th of July and people are like, what are those? And I'm like, you damn right. That's when Nectar was on top of a bar and a couple dudes were just sitting around drinking a beer, screwing sunglasses together, shipping orders. <laughs> And we, our first order, like those, I don't know if you remember, Brendan, the boxes were like white, look like a shoe box kind of. Yeah. But it, look, it looked like it could have been like 
shit ton of cocaine. You just didn't know what was in there. (laughs) When we got our first order, it it looked like we were running drugs up to our apartment. You know, all these white boxes that were, you know, a little bit smaller than a shoebox. We're just hand hand passing them up to each other. It could have been drugs. We just got away with it. They're going to be like, this motherfucker's going to have a tiger next week. We need to shut him down. (laughs) Hey, so you sh- guys! Uh, you guys have those uh, those delis. We are right that. I'd like to uh, love to grab a deli. Yes, this is an in- Sean. I wish you could. Sean, you could, that you could partake. This is so. Four weeks ago, I went and got delis for the next four weeks because I figured this should last four weeks. Turns out I was wrong, and I drove around. I dropped them off to everybody, and the last one I bought was actually a six pack of Bartles and James. And I thought we'll never get to this point because this would be the low point of the deli experiment. And guess what? Here we are four (laughs) weeks later, still leaning into zoom. Nice. We're all about to try an actual Bartles and James. I don't know if they're wine coolers anymore. If there's something different, I'm not exactly sure. There's wine cooler on it. So it is still a wine cooler. Yeah. I really did not know these were still made. Like I, I remember the two old guys on the porch. I don't. I mean, it's been twenty years since I saw one of those. Yeah, I thought they were. I thought they were gone, but I picked them up at the little, uh, the little mart just outside of the Corona epicenter here in, here in my neck of the woods, which was ultimately a bad choice. <laughs> but uh, yeah, now we've got Bartles and James to try tonight. Welcome to the most relaxing website in the world. Look at Bartles and James. So. Uh, Stu, if you want to yeah. uh, let people know what's up, I'm going to go grab this. Apparently, a, a <laughs> wine cooler is what I'm getting. Yeah. So, um, wow. What what can we lead with here? So the Bartles and James, or do you want to give it a read, uh, Troy? Is there anything to read off the can? Well, we're going to try. It looks like there's four different ones. We're going to try the ginger and lemon wine cooler. Stu will be happy to know it is gluten free. Yeah. Um, what's sad is, you know, you, you read these beers and they'll be like made since 1776 Dude. or made since 1600, you Ni- know, 1984, <laughs> 1984. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> we're all older than this company, which, you know, yeah. and the can says refrigerate after opening, like you're going to open it. Or not. <laughs> well, it's, it's a, a can. Yeah, and technically, I guess they're classifying this under still the the malt liquor, um, class. Like it's still saying it's malt liquor. It's not really wine. It's not. Do you self, see not the? Cool. Do you see the uh, alcohol content on here? Four percent. Four percent. Oh uh, yeah, I see it down here, very subtly on the bottom. Yeah, this is a uh, going to be a tough one because there's no even on their website. There's no particular write up or anything unique that they're saying about this. It's just a ginger and lemon flavored wine cooler. That's you four know what and it says down here under 4%. It that doesn't is. say malt beverage. It says wine specialty beverage. I would never heard that. Oh yeah. This is literally wine filled with sugar and bullshit. I wonder and if that's, hmm. let me tell Sean that, uh, my wife bought me the blue blockers. For uh, Christmas Hanukkah, and I wear them when I'm sitting in front of my computer all the time, or mostly at night when I'm watching TV. And I have to say, I do enjoy them. And actually, I wear them out sometimes, and uh, people compliment me. Oh, I didn't know you had glasses. I'm like, yeah, I just you know I don't wear them a lot. I'm usually wearing contacts or something. <laughs> people have no idea. Troy, you're, you're the coolest. coolest. Troy's over there with his <laughs> Troy's over there with his hearing aids and his glasses. Just, That's right. Just slaying broads. <laughs> I'm an old man. <laughs> How are you guys? How's that beer? It looks good. This is. Uh, I'm I'm drinking it, and I could tell you I couldn't tell you that it's got alcohol in it or anything. It just seems like it's. Uh, I don't know. It's just like a a lemon juice. That's really it's weird. Trash. I'm somewhere in between hating it and loving it. <laughs> I'd say it's spoiled, except it's in a can, so it can't be. I still really, can't. Bl- I still can't tastes believe like it says it tastes like wine to you. Tastes like wine. Yeah. Wine. Obviously, doesn't taste oh. like wine, but I can taste wine in it. 
Yeah, there's yeah. definitely. <laughs> Huh. Tastes like a ginger beer that somebody took one of those fake lemons and squirted lemon juice in it. All right. So let's see here. Ooh-wee. I'm going to get diabetes. Good Drink thing it's full of calories. Drink Drink some carbs. Lefty Lucy from Revelry. That looks <laughs> good. Is that a Kemp? Is that a Kemp <laughs> painting on there? Yep. Dude, I love it. How's how's he doing? I think he's doing all right. I mean, the brewery's doing sales, just growlers and things like that, but I think they have enough margins to survive. And how's Liam over at Apis Mercantile doing? They're about to launch into regular honey, which they're, it was his partner had a non-compete with his old company for two years that he couldn't sell regular honey. So now that that just ran up and CBD, you can't market it legally. They can't advertise. So they rely on their retail so they got crushed because 90% of their business is retail. Oh, shit. But they're about to launch Honey and be able to market market that aggressively, which is nice. So um, I think they'll be okay that they just had to let go of everybody in their staff and survive for a bit. But the Honey thing they're excited about. For anyone who doesn't know what I'm talking about, just go back to the Folly Beach episode from this past July and you can catch up with uh, with that whole crew, get up to speed. Stu, what do you uh, what do you think of this uh, wine cooler? It sounds weird saying it. Yeah, um, you know, it's not. I I don't even know where to classify it. I mean, it's a wine it it's a wine cooler, but for a deli, it's too unique. It's and it's not really good. <laughs> so, um, go ahead. The, yeah, um, <laughs> off the bat. I'm going to go really low. Ooh. It's because I don't see myself. Yeah. It, I don't like the, I just don't like the whole flavor. The marketing's a little weird. The only thing they have going for it is the fact that it's the two old guys from Bartles and James. I mean, that's classic, but it doesn't taste like a classic. I'd give it a two. A two. I did not expect a, uh, that low. I expected yeah. low. I didn't know. Jeez, I think the uh, the can on it. I'm surprised Stu didn't hate on the can with the stupid stripes. It is like, uh, well, it's just as lame in a can as it always was in a bottle. Unfortunately, yeah. Troy, yeah. what do you think of that? Do this. This is garbage. Like <laughs> this is trash. This this is to get seventeen year old high schoolers drunk like this is not palatable it's awful i will of course drink it but this is trash like i don't, I wouldn't recommend this for any i don't know anyone who would want to drink this like this is this is garbage i give it a one and that's mm-hmm. being generous wow i uh I, I i feel like this would be good for my kids they'd love it yeah. So I'm thinking maybe, maybe next weekend we just throw a Bartles and James party. No, that honestly, it's that it, it tastes like it has zero booze in it. I really think if a child got their hands on this, they would think it tastes okay. Like it's a crazy. lemony ginger beer. It's really, really sweet, like overly sweet. Yes. It's as sweet as I don't drink a lot of sodas anymore, and it, it I feel like it's literally as sweet as as a pop. So it's. It's really sweet, but if you can get past the extreme sweetness of it, I don't think the flavor's bad. It's just not. It's candy. I mean, it literally tastes like candy. But I don't hate it. I don't hate it as much as you guys hate it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be caught dead drinking it on account of so many reasons. But it's a two and a half. It could be. It could be a three. Like it's it the the, the dude. It's. You're way off. This is 4% and 120 calories, 10 grams of carbs, 7 grams of sugar, all the sugar, none of the alcohol. What? I mean, you might as well be drinking a soda. Yeah. It, even the yeah. ginger, the ginger doesn't have any bite. It's like a fake ginger. No. It's a fake lemon, but it's somewhere. Fake in everything. Yeah. You know, I'm liking it more and more. The more you talk about it. 
Well, you can be wrong. No, I'm. It's I'm happened. Look, it's it's pretty bad, but I think it is tolerable. So I'm gonna go two and a half. I'm gonna let it live right in the middle. I'm not gonna hate it. Ely, what do you think? Yeah, I'm kind of right there with you, Kennedy. It's you know when I feel like it's too sweet and I'm not that into it. I think about the fact that I would rather have it than virtually any IPA. <laughs> there you and go. If, <laughs> if they're farther down the list, Fair it's enough. hard for me to give this something as low as them because. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm a big kid. I like drinking shit like this because it's. I find it refreshing. I don't want to taste something nasty, but it is too sweet. Yeah. So, um, and I think that might be the difference in the wine cooler part of it. You know, that's why I do sense wine in there, and I don't know why or what makes it I different. Thought the wine part like got you to fourteen percent. Right, like wasn't that how it's supposed to work? Yeah, wine is about thirteen yeah. percent. So they've that gives you a pretty you good idea of how yeah. much that gives you an idea of how much soda's in it. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think, it's seventy five percent soda. I think this is like, if I remember correctly, the whole draw was you know it was the four pack glass bottles, and they were banking everything on the strawberry flavor when it first came out, I believe, and that. I mean, granted, that was years ago, but it seems like that was a bigger draw. Maybe it's just this flavor, but I'm not. Maybe it's just I'm not a wine cooler guy. Yeah, I don't think any of us are. I give it a two and a half. So we're we're falling between. We're probably at like two point two right now. Is probably where this nets out. Two 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 and a half is a two and a one. Yeah, so I'm going to give it a two point two. This is not going to be a winner, but. During this time of quarantine, when you're already eating too many carbs and all the bullshit that you want and drinking all the time, Jeez. this is a great way to continue bloating your face up. Oh, so that's seriously. a win. <laughs> How many days have you guys drank? I've drank. I took off one day. Oh, I've been so taking off one day a week, usually Tuesdays. I'm I don't taking drink much, so I'm only drinking one day a week, maybe. So, that's pretty good. You're doing all right. So you're picking up the slack for the rest of us. Because I can honestly say I'm doing Tuesdays and Wednesdays clean right now. And outside of that, it's like I'm drinking. It's brutal. And when I drink, <laughs> it's only like one or two drinks. Have you guys noticed, like, we've been doing a lot of walks. And I don't think I've never seen all my neighbors. Like, Oh, yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah, more people are out. We've That's discovered... Crazy. There's a, there's a gym that you can get to not far from here. And it's like one of these palatial gyms. So it's got, you know, tennis courts all over, swimming pools outside, swimming pools indoors. They also do like daycare. So it's huge, huge establishment. And I've been riding up there with my kids. And when we get there, it's like all the kids in the neighborhood have nothing to do. So they're all getting on their bikes and they're going there to this ghost town that looks like a little mall. And it's like the kids are just tearing up the parking lot. And moms are showing up and doing chalk paintings on the on the parking lot. It's crazy. It's a, it's a ghost town, but it's actually the most vibrant place in my neighborhood because everybody's riding their bikes over there because they don't know where to They'll go. They'll be arrested soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a fact. Yeah. <laughs> when do you guys think people are going to be able to go back to a restaurant? Half, let's say fifty percent capacity. Well, in in Virginia, they just extended it today. They shut. Well, not maybe the restaurants, but I know that the bowling alley. Did you guys already talk about this? No, like, no, I know, didn't even know uh, this okay. happened. So, I didn't so know this happened. Um, your entertainment, sports, and bowling alleys and things like that. They were supposed to reopen April 29th, and the governor just extended it to match the June tenth date. So, uh, who who knows? I mean, the Fed's trying to do something different, and then I was talking with a guy that uh, works for CarMax and it's crazy. You know, their corporate headquarters here, they were at 28,000 employees three days ago. Now they are at 11,000 employees. Shit. They furloughed it. And if it goes much further, they said they could see the company running just on their skeleton of 3000. I really uh, worry about all the, all the Karens. Like you said, like I was listening to a podcast today and they were talking about how, you need to be 10 feet from people and you should wear, everyone should wear masks all the time. And I don't know if we're ever going to go back from that. We will like, never really, go back. You can't it, go to a it, restaurant it, until Karen tells you. Yeah. It's going to be it, it, people. Karen. Have, they've drank the Kool-Aid. Like it's just, 
things will never be the same. And it's it scares me more than this stupid virus, for sure. Karen's the people that follow without questioning. Mm. Well, you know, Karen. Say, the cliche housewife that's driving all of us right now. You know, she's got yeah. the short hair. She's like, let me talk to your manager long before there's ever a manager being needed in the, the like argument. If she finds out that you try to go to a restaurant, she's telling everybody and calling the cops. Yep. That's Karen. Yeah. She's getting on Facebook yeah. and letting everybody Jesus. know. That's Karen. Yeah. I've been on the uh, I've been on this cares. weird weird mask game. So I've been trying to link up my supply chain with, um, you know, hospital chains and things like that that need the masks. And and I my thought is that it's going to be I'm I'm going to buy some and then just make a civilian website because people are going to want. I think there's going to be a phase out process where no one's going to go to a, a baseball game or a concert or the grocery store without feeling like they need to wear something until yep. it's fully gone um but right now china is in like a fucking circus of of how many people are producing these things they're at, they're all at full capacity and if you if you go back six months and you said you wanted to customize a mask and make the print blue instead of black no issue new random packaging no issue now it's like if you want custom shit get you know, we'll take the other 50 people that want to make a million dollar or a million pieces. I think order. you're playing it safe. I think there's going to be people that never go back to not wearing masks. Like they're mm-hmm. just, the people are going to, you're going to see more and more people just wearing masks 24, 7, 365 now. Well, you've seen that in Asian countries. That's pretty normal to see people walking around in masks and they've been through this kind of thing before. So you may be right. Because yeah, they have the wet markets. We shouldn't have to do that here. Or we should just open wet markets. <laughs> The time is you now. would love that. I would be, I would, you know, I would not, <laughs> but I would like a tiger. It will full on be an accessory. Like I saw a guy with yeah. the Dallas Cowboys one the other day and it hit me. I was like, this is going to be a real deal accessory that people have. Oh. They're going to have ice around the edges. They're going to have oh. their sports <laughs> team. They're going to have that, you name it. And it's going to be a market for sure. Rip. Got that we, mass drip. We should make one that just like is a print of your face. So it just looks normal. Yeah. Yes. I did see it's a like, guy on Reddit the other day. He had a mask that had his exact same facial hair profile, like a mustache with a long goatee. And he said he walked in a mm-hmm. bank and they were like, could you please take that off? And he literally pulled it down and he looked exactly the same. They were like, <laughs> they laughed. They processed my check. <laughs> um, I heard on Elliot this morning that there's a nurse somewhere that's got little dicks on hers. What? And she, yeah, she's got a dicks on it. And if somebody says something about it, she's like, well, this is how I know that you're too close. If you can see your <laughs> penises, you're too close to me. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thanks for noticing. Yeah. Get the fuck back. That's our, fair. Uh, uh, our good friend Terrence texted me today. He said, why has no one made a Jim Carrey mask mask? Like the green smoking, like the yeah. full face, like mask mask. I'm like, somebody it's should com- do that. It's common. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I feel bad. Like we had this guy, I mean, in this deep world of me connecting people, there's this, you know, investors who are buying them and reselling them. And we needed to get this guy to come finance it because I didn't get in the, into it to like put up a bunch of money to do this. This one way they wanted to do this was escrow, meaning they'd show the funds, put them in escrow with be a lawyer and then the factory produce it. But there's so much volume, the factory wants payment. They're like, fuck you, we'll go with somebody else that is gonna pay today, not a, f- a bank account. And, um, you know, that I lost what I was talking about. You were talking <laughs> <Sorry>. about escrow. <laughs> uh, the masks. Um, yeah, the masks. Well, the funny thing is, is that uh, uh, I, I read today where when COVID first kind of broke out in China, the the government of China reached out to Italy to have for, for masks to, to help with the, the, the cut down and Italy donated like a bazillion masks to China because it was ready and China didn't have to produce them. Bazillion. And now in <laughs> the turnaround, yeah, in the turnaround, Italy needed masks and China's like charging a premium to get them to give, give back their own shit that was donated earlier. Yeah. they're um, The whole world's buying them. Uh, yeah. I, rem- I remember what I was saying. So this in- investor guy we brought in, he was like, why the fuck did- are you guys doing this? And he made a good point. It's like, dude, I don't know. I see it on the news every day that there's a shortage in masks. Like I have a great relationship, nine years worth of contacts and, you know, supply chain that I want to use for good. 
And maybe we're just better at sourcing the government. I think that these hospital systems usually had a stockpile that they would pull from. They'd call Minnesota where the fuck it is and they'd just get replenished. But those people didn't have like a, you know, 20, 30 plus factories that they worked with and knew how to source them the right way because now it seems like the, the states are on their own um, and they're just getting pushed where they are. But how is there still a shortage? We should have been on top of this. It doesn't take that long on my knowledge to make them. They should just buy a couple of factories and get them produced. 3M is maxing out at 100 million a month. But right now they're worth more than gold. Like the price of them is probably three times what it should be right now. And they're caking. They're making the most money they've ever made in their lives. Yeah. The government is not efficient. What? <laughs> yeah, hold on. How are you telling me private firms <laughs> yeah. might actually have a better supply chain in their back pocket than the government? This is that blasphemy. Is uh, yeah. These are my new overlords. I don't know if you knew this, but they've told me yeah. to stay home. Actually, Sean, <laughs> Sean, you're one of the few states that hasn't been shut down, right? Like you don't have any official order. They told us to, to stay at home, but it hasn't been like um, mandatory yet. And it's still like, there's still a lot of people that are inside. It's definitely changed. It's not. I think there's like, only seven states still that aren't under a mandatory government f- or governor action, I think. We're not on a mandatory government. I mean, yeah, they're not enforcing it. No, you know? there's no, 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 but I mean, there's a written, the governor signed some, the, the, the federal emergency type scenario. Where can you guys? State. Where can you guys not go? Like we can't, like I can't go to the ocean. It's like why I live here is so I can go surf and see the ocean. Like they've closed the beaches to residents only. You have to how, show your ID. How are you dealing with surfing? Because I know you get up every day and surf. That's that's kind of your thing. I'm not not surfing. Um, it sucks. You know, it, right now they closed the boat landings too. And you, I swear, man, we went out maybe a week into it on a Saturday and it was like the 4th of July was going on. There was everybody who had a boat was on their fucking boat and a lot of traffic on the water, just kind of like people being dumb to rafting up together. Yeah, but now, sure. the, now the boat landings are closed and you can't go on your boat unless you have a charter fishing license. That's bullshit. Yeah. Hey, it's for the people's safety, man. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to get your charter fishing license. I know. Should be for the people's sanity at this point. What can what can they do? <clears throat> yeah. Now we're worried about that. I do yeah. have a I do have a, a, a slight topic change because Ely, you sent something in and I've heard the, the beginnings of this story, but I would love to hear more about it. You, you sent in a topic. Do you recall what that topic was? I do not. I remember sending something <laughs> in, but this is gonna be interesting. It's about him. He yeah, already forgot it. This is this is the beauty of checking the email right before the show starts. Yeah. It was two words. I know exactly what it is now. Yeah. <laughs> would, you, would, you, would you mind telling the story? Because how this transaction came to be, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to hear how this went down. I mean, do you know anything about it? I've heard, I've heard basics, but I would love to hear your version of it before I start butchering it with, with oh, my but version. Some, but, but, I mean, you've heard about my specific one. Are you saying that you've heard it from other people around that it, it has happened? I'm not kidding. This has actually happened to my mother. So really, I find it very interesting that this happened that to you. That checks out. Yeah. Interesting. So you want me to just read you the email? That would be a great Please. place to start. Yes. Okay. I don't want to bury the lead, so I'll let you let you do it. All right. So this is the email that I got, and it says it starts off. I know, and it's my password. So everybody has a password that they use for different things online. It's your actual I, correct password. My actual correct one. So I know blank is your password. You don't know me and you're thinking, why have you received this email, right? Well, I actually placed a malware on the porn website and guess what? You visited this website to have fun. You know what I mean? (laughs) While you were watching the video, your web browser acted as a RDP remote desktop and a key logger, which provided me access to your display screen. (laughs) What exactly did I do, you ask? I made a split screen video. First part recorded the video you were viewing. You've got fine taste. Ha ha. And next part, <laughs> I recorded your webcam. Yup. It's you doing nasty things. What should I do? Oh, well, no. I believe $1,900 <laughs> is a fair price for our little secret. You'll 19. make the payment via Bitcoin to the below address. 
and there's the Bitcoin address. You have 24 hours to make this payment. I have a unique password, blah, blah, blah. So yeah. this dude says he caught you whacking your bag to some so point. How many hundreds of dollars are you out? That's right. So I paid him <laughs> twice now. <laughs> this so, one's for the future. Yeah, there, exactly. There, here's there, 30, 100 bucks. Let's just call it even. <laughs> yeah. The very the first one. Is, like is this like an easy pass? Auto replenish? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So the you first, literally... the first mistake he made was asking for Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it's because they can't trace it. That's why they do that. So no, you you, you literally to... you've literally been held at blackmail for them not to release a video of you beating off to some porn. Yes, absolutely. And you are not concerned at all. No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that I would be either. Why so, have seen that video? Why would I be concerned? So my mom got this got a similar email. I don't think her guy was as charming. Your guy sounds like you should pay him. He sounds adorable. Yeah. <laughs> funny. But, but my mom got no, one of these. What about the password? That's the weird part. Like if it's a correct pass password of something you use. But you think about how many times passwords get leaked. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they have these massive data breaches and these happen yeah. all the time where people get all these passwords. So now all you have to do is find that email address and that password and you send it out to all those people. And it's going to resonate with a certain number of the people where they're like, oh shit, that really is my password. And they're going to have to think about that. But apparently my mom was part of one of these. And she's like, I've never been to one of these sites in my life. And I was like, well, then you really don't have to worry about yeah. whatever the hell they're they're threatening. So don't worry about it. Yeah. Tell them to pound sand. The reality yeah. is they don't have, have shit on you. The ones that are brutal is when they send you something and they actually lock your computer. I've seen this yeah. happen before where they can get in and they can freeze your computer. It? Well, I've just I've heard of this. Yes, <laughs> a Where, friend told me. Yeah, well, they'll literally will freeze your computer and all your documents and all your shit, and then you're stuck. You know, you're like, yeah. I can't get into my computer, and you're gonna have to pay this. But like, a beat off video. I mean, eh, like, you know, that happens. <laughs> like everybody's human. Yeah. So here, here's the exact like. <laughs> letter this is some of the fbi has been cracking down on they said since 2018 but the, the two payments of 889 <laughs> let's see here i mean would but would, either, would any of you guys be concerned about that or would you just scroll to the next email like i did i think that i would pause i would certainly i would change my passwords on everything that would be step one but outside i would know that, it's not true because i don't have a camera like that's not something that's possible. Yeah, that's part of my whole thing. It's like, this is my work yeah. computer. Yeah. I'm, not, yeah. I'm not on porn on this computer, so I know you're yeah. full of shit for one. I'm, I'm not afraid to be famous. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the but, good news but, is you won't have to worry about it, Stu. A picture of you slow jerking to midget <laughs> porn is not going to fucking become the next thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. You buried the lead. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think I would change my password. I can see where it would freak someone out. I mean, I can definitely understand where, like, you know, even, you know, somebody like Brennan's mom, who's never even been on those sites, like, could still freak out. You know, like, people, like, we, we talked about it with my dad. Like, he shared the fucking picture of the Vietnam vets, and it was the fucking, fucking... The Tropic Thunder dudes, like oh, I got got by the people. I got got by the IRS one. I told y'all that where I went to the police station. Yeah, yeah, you uh -huh. did. Yeah. yeah, but that seems legit. This one, this one's a, a reach. So here's yeah. the question, though, because I'm reading this article. Even though they say that last year there were 83 million dollars in losses for 51 thousand scams so that means the people are paying to stop it from getting out there which means that they were doing it dude if these people would work rona into their scam they would be making killing right now there's got to be a rona scam out there right got to because it's you know it's got these old folks terrified they're the ones falling for the shit in the first place oh yeah well it's already started with the ones that are uh piggybacking off of the proposed check 
the twelve hundred dollar IRS check that everybody says we're getting for the stimulus package. There's emails going out saying, "Hey, you know, we're going to send it to you. We need to have this account verified. And you, you know, test send them a dollar, and then they drain your whole." Account. Oh, that's a pretty good scam. Uh, so like I, already, I'm, uh, I'm not uh, saying I'm not saying I'm proud of them, but that's well done. Because all these people are desperate for money and they're like looking at it like now is the time to send my my bank account information because I desperately need that check. Wow. That's so, brutal. <clears throat> There's a lot of shit out there. My identity got like stolen and it was from a words with friends, like the owner of that company who owns a bunch of apps and yeah. games. It like I think I don't know, thirty million people's like you know, shit got taken and somebody opened or like try to take out thousands of dollars in Texas and then had oh. my social security number. And just, it was like, a, it was bullshit. And I didn't freeze my credit. And they tried to take a loan out with my social security number. Yeah. Um, it sucks. It's like a different world that people do is just trying to like, have you gotten those phone calls where they like tell you to, you know, ask you your social or it's the FBI calling or some shit. Yeah. I had a little bit of that two years ago and it was, um, they were trying to open up accounts in different stores. I get, I kept getting these letters in the mail saying, sorry, your credit's been rejected for like Macy's and, um, because Hot they topic. were, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> so I ended up having to, you know, call all three credit companies and everything. Mine's on a constant freeze. And if you want to get my credit, I got to give them my password and, but Stu it's, lost his shit when his Forever Twenty One account got fucking shut down. Hell he was yeah. not having. Where's he gonna get the Doc fact Martin? that you even know that that was one of them that they applied for? <laughs> it kills me. <laughs> it was old Navy. It was old yeah, Navy. Old Navy. <laughs> well, can I get this on layaway? These fourteen ninety nine jeans. <laughs> even yeah. more white tees back there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> killing me. Um, yeah, there's I, people come up with the craziest scams. Well, Ely, I'm guys su- doing? Go like, ahead, with, Sean. With, uh, how are you guys doing with everything? Like all quarantined, all, you know, do you see anybody? Like I have like two friends that my wife and I see that we trust and they're not seeing a bunch of people. I love I that you're work every day. I love that you're doing the quarantine like neighbor, like the quarantine couple. That's like the the best thing that I wish I'd leaned into. But unfortunately, since my wife works every day, like in a hospital, like I can't. Like I can't, you know, justifiably say we haven't seen anybody like we're all good. So it makes it a little more difficult. But these families that are at home all the time and have just said, yeah, like I'm going to I'm going to cozy up with the, this couple. I think that's brilliant. But aren't you actually a saying, hey, if we go down, we're all going to go down together. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of it. That's <laughs> kind you, of like, who saying. do you choose? Okay, you, you know, let's pick somebody. All right, well, if we all get it, we get it. Yeah, it's still better than doing what a lot of people that are essential workers have to do. Like, my wife works at Sister Living. She's going out and being surrounded, you know, by craziness. I'm going to job sites and prisons and putting myself out there. Therefore, we're relying on in-laws and parents to watch the kids. And, you know, there's, you know, who knows how it cross contaminates, you know, it's just what we have to do because we're both and we're both lucky to be, be able to work. So, like, I'm not complaining. It's just it is what it is. That's the fucked up thing. You're like, I'm lucky to be working. We have health insurance, so I'm not going to stop. Like, yep. I, I need this more than I ever have. Yep. It's crazy. For sure. If I have hand sanitizer, like sitting in my car. I feel like. Yeah. I'm- I'm definitely more conscious of like what I'm doing with my, you know, touching doorknobs and I even like open door handles weird. If I can, like I assume that no one touches the top left corner as much than (laughs) grabbing it. You got to be careful. You got to be careful with logic. I was telling, telling all the listeners and everybody that I found a uh, convenience store where I would go buy my beer because it was off the beaten path. And then it turned out that the retirement home right behind it became like the epicenter for the coronavirus outbreak in my area. So I failed <laughs> miserably just by trying to use that logic. So you could very well be walking into that top left corner is the grossest spot in the whole thing because everybody's top left cornering that bitch. Yeah. I also, I also don't like- realize how, how many times you touch your face. Like, yeah. 
you're always touching your face. You're like, don't touch your face. You're like, I never touch my. Oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> I heard too that like bathroom stalls, like the first stall, usually people pass because they think that's the most used. But everyone thinks that, so the first one is usually cleaner. Yeah, see, second. I'm going to start using reverse logic on anything, everything. I know that you know that I know, so I'm going to do this. Is that old gag? I'm going to start using the most highly trafficked area because everyone's going past it. Brenda's never been wrong, so I've never been right either. It's a really. I finally, I finally started seeing some of the ads for people. Uh, there was one ad. Uh, the company was selling. Basically, looked like a brass knuckle, like a single brass knuckle with a long. It looked like a key, but they advertised it as you can hold the, you know, the the circle part of it. You can use the hook of the key to open up door now doorknobs. It was the the soft. End, the other end was soft, so you could punch on you like um, when you're doing. I've seen uh, this out the thing. grocery store or whatnot, and they were selling it was like 19.99 for basically this brass four inch key. And I was like, well. Yeah, you know, it's people a, are going to buy that like crazy, so they don't have to touch anything. It's a stupid ass hook. That you put your you put your finger in, and then it's got a long part, little hook. Obviously, it was designed for something else. But they're like, hey, this is great for opening doors and touch. And they show like pictures of people hitting a touch screen like ATM yeah. with it. And I'm like, so now you're taking a metal object and you're touching all the stuff that you're grossed out about. You're putting it back in your pocket with a false sense of security. And you're now it's touching your phone and rubbing around like they're making a bunch of yeah. money off of a bottle opener that they had made six months ago. Is it called take my good hand dot com? Yeah, it's the worst. <laughs> it's not going well. I don't understand about the gloves. People like touch stuff. You're supposed to throw them away after you touch whatever you just touched. But they keep reusing them and touching more stuff. Yeah, my daughter, my daughters were handed gloves at something the other day, and they came walking back out with their gloves, and they got in the car, and I'm like, "Why are you wearing those gloves?" They're like, "Cause it's keeping us safe." I was like, "You just defeated the whole purpose. Go throw them in the trash and try this again." So that's the problem with most people who never worked in like an EMS or medical field. Like, you don't understand how to don and doff, you know, certain PPEs, like. You put it on, you go about, you touch everything. You t- you're like, my hands are safe. It's like, no, you touch everything in your house. You touch your face. You touch your car. Like, you have to treat them like they're on fire, basically. And there's certain ways to put them on, take them off that's safe, and, and you know, turn them over. But people put, put them on the first thing of the day and then go about their whole day and then take them off. And it's like, you've done nothing. This, the, yeah. only, the only people I'd hang out with right now are sandwich artists. Because those subway employees, <laughs> those subway employees have been taking gloves on and off every single sub for twenty years. I hate when I see somebody like it's more so at festivals. You know, they're wearing the gloves at the festival, which is like, all right, I get it. You're trying to look like your hygiene is there, and then they're like scratching their body with the yeah. gloves. Yeah. Well, it's like, <laughs> yeah. This is not go like how many times have you done that since you prepared all the food? I took four leaks with these uh, gloves on, and I'm good. My penis Pipe. is safe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they should make gloves that, like, change color when you touch something you're not supposed to touch in them. Like, oh, shit, I need to change these. So I drove through the Burger King today to get a sandwich on my way to a home inspection, and beforehand, you know, you could go into the Burger King and get something to go. They'd shut down the eat-in part. Then they shut down the eat-in part. You had to go to the drive through and the guys just – handing you your food then they put the gloves on and now when i went through <laughs> some lady she literally le- used the like uh, kid plastic two-prong grabber like you would pick up trash or pick grab something like the and, robot arm yeah and yeah. like <laughs> stuck it out and i grabbed it i was like all right and then they used a tray for the drink it was like here pick your drink they're not like they don't want to have they're not touching anything I Those mean, robot arms are like a fortune. You're still handing them your card and touching the card thing, and there's still a lot of touching going on. Yeah, and I don't know. It's just uh, I find it all disturbing personally. The, all of it is bothering me. Yeah, just watching like, people just, do it. Yeah, watching people do it. Just the, how irrational it all is. How like. If it should show everyone how fast everything can spiral out into nothing. Well, we're we're seeing that. I mean, did yeah. you see? Did you see how 
uh, Google and Apple right now are joining forces and they've created this this technology that will allow you to see if you've been around somebody who's been exposed to the coronavirus. Sketch. And the way this will work is that every time your phone comes in close proximity to another phone, they can use near field communication via Bluetooth. So my phone knows that I've been by your phone. So what and we're about to approve this. Like we're about to literally say this is okay. We're going to we're going to let this be a thing where they're they're saying that there's no personal identifiable information that's being passed. It's literally just your phone's device ID communicating with another phone's device ID and that they're not going that's not to personal at all. Yeah, that but they're not going to tie it back to the individual. Now here's what's fucked up. I literally work in advertising and digital advertising. And we, you know that's a lie. We use this stuff all the time <laughs> to yeah. determine that a personal device ID is also tied to this email address and this email address that's tied to this tax return and this yep. DMV record and all of this. So for you to tell me that Google and Apple haven't figured this out and I'm selling it for two dollars for a thousand impressions to people in the digital landscape, you're fucking full of shit. But they're they've they're approving a technology now where all the Apple phones and all the Android phones will be allowed to communicate with each other. And if somebody decides they want to say, Hey, I've been diagnosed, they say it, and then an alert will go out to all of the phones that have been in proximity of that person to say, no Yes, gonna do that. you've been exposed. Bullshit. People are going to sign up in droves because it's safety. Safety and freedom don't go hand in hand, right? No one's not, no one's going to say they've been in contact with somebody. Like that's not going to happen. The first person that says yes, I've been in contact. The amount of phones that have been close enough for that that low level Bluetooth connection to pick up is going to be crazy, and it's going to start triggering all those people, and then more people are going to start doing it. But the fact that they're going to they're going to pass this legislation to allow this kind of network to be done means that we now know where everybody's been, who they've been around, what they've done, and it's opening up Pandora's box on another level. And I've been, I've been worried about all the shit that we already have on our phones to begin with. But- so my biggest question is, is what the, le- the legislation – is saying that they're going to be able to pass the information, but it's a voluntary basis for the information to be loaded into your phone. Because what it sounds like to me that Google has probably worked out, they've worked out something to where if I go get tested and it's in my medical record and it's a digital file, then Google's gotten to where they can see your medical records and then it's downloaded and it's shared without your knowledge. And then you get into a whole HIPAA violation. Well, and that's precisely it. So they're saying that this is HIPAA compliant because it's not tied to an individual. Dude, it's going to get way worse than that. They're going to, they can start, they'll realize when you're coughing too much. Yeah, they are they're flagging you yeah. for coughing too much. Your that's mic the listening. Gonna get, it's going to get, you know what's going to happen out of all this is you're going to have a, you're going to have a vaccination requirement. They yep. require you to prove that you, to be able to get a driver's license or something like that. I guarantee you that's where it goes in the next few years. So we we talked about earlier this week, we talked about possibly doing, or I talked about trying to do like our favorite conspiracy theories that are coming out of the whole coronavirus thing. And one of the things that I was reading about that actually makes a lot of sense is the uh, Bill Gates, like IQ 2020, where they want to like chip yeah. people and find out who has vaccinations and who does not. And this kind of does open up the door to that pandora's box as well and Ely, to your point exactly what you were just saying you really could get to that point if they're chipping people to show you know what vaccinations they have and what they don't have this is the gateway to that opening up for sure and you can scare and, karen you can do anything right and the irony of that is, is bill gates and steve jobs didn't let their kids have cell phones or get vaccinated well why would they they know evil that shit is <laughs> Just, I they mean, didn't I let just, their kids get vaccinated. Are you no, sure? No, cell phones, cell phones. <laughs> no, they, and they, 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 I mean, you can read all, you can read all about it. But who he, he, says they didn't get vaccinated? That can't I be thought true. he said cell phones. Both. He said both. He doesn't. Um, he didn't didn't allow his kids to have cell phones or let, let his kids get vaccinated. Well, like most that things, Stu says. True. Like most things, Stu yeah, says. Yeah, cannot be true. I'm but. buying into half. Um. <laughs> do you guys think that like I, I listen to this sign some guy scientist dude that said that 
people shouldn't do anything. It's a typical respiratory virus. It should hit <clears throat> for four to five weeks and we have to have herd immunity at some point and we're just prolonging it by staying inside and that kids are like the best to spread it because they're, they're going to fight 20, 30 viruses at that age, you know, and, yeah. and they're going to get by it. And instead now we're just like festering it inside. We should be outside where it can't really survive as well. Yep. And instead of it being like, yes, that he was basically saying the hospitals for sure, we need to protect the elderly and the hospitals are going to get overrun, but they have emergency equipment and tents. Like instead of four weeks of tents and chaos, it's going to be four or five months of just this whole thing happening. Yeah. That's the um, whole beauty of flattening the curve. We're not going to have all of it at once. We're going to have a horrible problem for a long time. Yeah. I mean, I, I really don't know. I just like, I've heard different stuff about just the immune system and, the but numbers is, still don't add up. I mean, and, and it never will until that app comes out. And then everyone's like, holy shit, we all have it. Like, I feel like I've had it twice now. Like, I didn't taste anything for three weeks. I mean, three days. Um, <laughs> and I felt like I had, I had something. But, you know, I don't know if I, I at one point I was waking up like, am I going to get it tomorrow? Like, I don't know what's going on. Like, we're still like, I'm at the office and I'm only with one other guy. But the post office is coming every day, opening our, like, I'm sanitizing every every time they come in, but I don't know if I'm going to get it from these guys. Yeah. It's look, we're in crazy times. And, and I think to Ely's whole point and what everybody's saying is we all recognize that a certain amount of civil liberties are being chipped away and it's all kind of at risk right now in the name of safety, which is kind of always the, the mask that that wears. It's like playing against fear. Anybody will just, oh, I'll, I'll give you my cell phone data because I'm scared of getting it. Yeah, I want to okay. know if the if the person I was next to had it, so I'm going to register for this. And now I don't, I don't, I wouldn't do that shit. I, I wouldn't do it for a, for a second. And that's fine. You should, but if that passes, it opens up the gateway to them being able to look at people who have not, you know, said that they want to do it. The truth is, you you sign up for terms and conditions all the time with random apps. You think you fucking playing trivia? You just sold yep. everything. Yeah. Everything. Oh, I yep. And you don't I thought I was playing words with friends and then my life got. Yeah, because yeah. it had all that access to so much information beyond the words that you were sharing with your friends. And that's the reality of the world we live in. And if you open up a gateway where we can access that information, it's a whole other problem. And that's just one of the scenarios that uh, could be coming of this. It's 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 intense. It's not. And it's a lose lose situation on this economic shutdown, because if the numbers stay low. Then they say, great, we handled it by shutting everything down. And if the numbers go high, as far as cases and death, there will be like, see, it could have been even worse if we hadn't. Yeah, I've been preaching down. that the whole time. Like, Regardless, the what somebody's going to get to raise their hand and go, you fucked up. Because if, yeah. if, if we succeed, then this was draconian and we fucked up. If we fail, then we should have done more. Right. And it's like yeah. it's they can they can play it both ways. The problem is, is there's this disconnect between intentions and what's being done. So when you if if you try to com complain or point out something that's being done that's draconian, somebody can always say, yeah, well, we're trying to flatten the curve. Well, yeah, the overall intention of everything that we're doing is to flatten the curve. But the officers that arrest the guy paddleboarding by himself, <laughs> how do you get to them not having enough sense to be able to make their own decision or they arrested some dude throwing a frisbee with his daughter at the park. How, how are we not, where is it being missed that distancing is more important than dictating if something is, um, uh, what's the word that they're using for, Mandatory. What kind of a worker are you, Troy? Essential. essential. Not essential. Yeah, if something's essential. In other words, they're arresting people workers. based on how what how what they're doing being essential or not, instead of. In other words, you playing ball at the park is not essential, so you should be arrested. Instead of they're just playing a ball by themselves, ten feet apart with nobody else. We're just going to keep walking. That's that's the part that's well because you've put trick. you've put ambiguous laws in the hands of people who get to interpret them how they want so, so are all those people stupid I'm just saying I think it com I think it comes from like you know for what we're going through trying to get the paycheck uh, protection plan 
was it's we got fucked by Wells Fargo and fuck them for, you know, it's not even them. It's really, this went from Trump signing it to the SBA who was like scrambling over the weekend that Friday he signed Saturday. They had no idea. They had to build SOPs to deliver that to banks. And then banks had no clue because they've never dealt with this. Just like the cop who's like, should I arrest these dudes for throwing baseball? Well, they told me anybody who's doing this, I should arrest. So I'm going to do it. It just wasn't, you know, on the lower levels distributed in a way uh, productively. They didn't know what was right or wrong. There's so much gray area. Like I could get 47,000, I could get 57,000 for this eight week period. And my bank is like, I had to get a new bank, by the way, it was like, <laughs> ah, fuck it. Just get 57. Cause like, who cares? You need to do 75% of that. It's gotta be the payroll. Like, All right. Um, I don't know. I think there's a lot of, it just got pushed down this whole thing so fast and no one knows what's going on, especially like cops or the banker. I can't, my banker I've been with for eight years and, I was like so mad at him, but he has no idea. He can't do anything. Because they've created a, a rule that they don't even have any guidelines no, for. It's no all just a protocol. These. Yeah. Yeah, that's the reality of everything we're dealing with. Here's an overarching generalization that should be enforced. How you enforce it is up to you or how you how you hand out those funds is up to the banker, mm-hmm. but the banker's been given no no guidelines. Yeah. It's extremely difficult to deal with. I mean, that's... You're working in a vacuum and you don't want to be wrong. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what do you think, Ely? I mean, to, to that point of like. I still think somebody fucked up. I mean, I mean, yeah. This, I mean, I do see a different in personally, I see a difference in your situation and what I'm talking about. Like, sure. the guy walking over to arrest his daughter playing Frisbee should know that he's fucking wrong. Like this is true. you don't need, you know, somebody mm-hmm. to explain it to you. Somebody in that chain of command should understand that that's wrong. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's that yeah. simple. Well, it's but, like the mission, like, I mean, it was a, the speed at which things were done, like to your point, Sean, as far as bringing down laws and trying to get things drafted. Uh, I'm sure you guys read about what happened with the state of Michigan today and yesterday. They drafted that law about you can't have in, you can't have a uh, person to person in, instruction for children meaning the schools were closing and that was drafted really quickly and inadvertently they've actually outlawed homeschooling and now they were talking about how some someone if they wanted to without using common sense could just say hey that's breaking the law and turn in mom and individual kid getting homeschool it's kind of crazy it's weird times we're in well, even- you, know, you know, we've talked about it like the virus is a threat, but what we're doing could be a bigger threat and no one seems to be paying that much mind. I feel like Ely and I are upset because it's just hook, line, and sinker from everyone. It's just crazy that it's, that's the route we're going. I mean, I think they're paying attention to it, but they're also using this. I mean, we're in a medical martial law and once they quote unquote release everything back to starting up the economy and whatnot what portions of all of these civil liberties are still are going to be lost and we're still going to be under some sort of mandate that we weren't even aware of and not not reading the fine print you know like brenda was saying the problem is now like and i think they know it like Karen will be trained. Like it's not going to be the same. Like Bingo. You, movie not, theaters you aren't going to happen. Yeah, you can't flip the switch and go back to where yeah. we were because people are going to complain. Well, that's right. the reality of it. A lot of people are going to be okay with this forever because they're always going to want to be safe, and so they're going to accept it on some level. A certain you know, group of the population you know who's loving it. Howie Mandel, that dude was ahead of the curve. But that dude's a genius. <laughs> Look at him now. Like flattening the curve is equally as important as keeping the economy running. But I just get this overwhelming feeling that we're only doing one right now. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Well, there's no happy medium. No. And this open ended, this open ended, we'll just let you know when we're there type of thing is dog shit. Like, again, I've said this on this, and, and you, Sean, as a business owner, if they would have told you, hey, man, 
we're doing this for a month and then we're all getting back to work. That would have been way better for you because you can plan for that. You know what I mean? You can be like, yeah. I need to budget for a month. Cool. Instead, you have this uncertainty of when the hell is Fauci nuts going to cut us loose? You have no clue. You know what I mean? Yeah. And what's tough on the, on the money thing, it's like I'm in a, a form group of like business guys. A lot of them, are, all of them are very successful, older dudes. And one of them has a, a business he's been running for 20 years. And it's all uh, videographers in every, a bunch of cities, major cities that go out and film breaking news. And he outsources them and, and successful for 20 years. And he's like, why do you get to dictate that I have to use this money from the moment I get it? I have eight weeks ticking right off as soon as it's deposited. And he's like, I'm going to unfurlough my team, bring them back to do nothing. And then at the end of that, I'm going to have to furlough them and fire them at that point because um, we have to use this money. Uh, so it's just an interesting time about how business owners are pressured into like, we got to pay these people, even though we have no business, I can't hire my sales guy back. Yeah. There's no retail. I just hate the one size fits Man. all solution. We can't control you and we can't be sure with 100% certainty that you're not going to talk to somebody else within six feet. So we're going to force everyone to not like just let certain people like we're doing it on our own already have certain businesses enact spacing enact plexiglass enact hand sanitizer and for fuck's right. sake let people go back i mean just like and not everyone like it's destroying the weakened immune and the elderly like we're acting like it's not you know what i mean yeah and i think hu humans are like naturally we all want to know what tomorrow is going to look like the uncertainty is what it's driving people crazy, especially as a business owner. It's like, I can't forecast that well to begin with. I'm always going off numbers and algorithms and things, but right. it's already hard. And now I'm going to forecast nothing. I have no fucking clue. Yeah. What, you don't know when you? nothing ends. When does the but, black hole stop? And that's like, what's difficult. It bothers me that all the money's getting thrown to the corporations and not the small business owners. Like, well, they're trying to throw the money to the small business owners. They just don't have a real way to disperse the money. I mean, that's what Sean's dealing with. They are actively trying to pump money into the small business owners, but it comes with, it comes with caveats. It comes with unwritten rules as to how you get it. It comes with all of these, you know, these other, this red tape that you don't, quite understand which is going to create a weird situation like sean you just said you switched banks and i question if that's because one bank interpreted the rules more loosely so you were willing to move i mean i don't know that that's the case but i mean it was tough i mean wells fargo they said they said you can apply online so i went on friday morning 8 a.m i'm online says request an application i put my name my email address and phone number submit nothing till monday go to the bank monday positive check Ask somebody, hey, do you know what's going on in the drive through They have no idea. They said, check online. It got removed from online Sunday night because they had so many applications. And really, if they had just put, like, how many employees do you have? If it was over 500, they might have been able to knock out a quarter of that that you weren't even qualified to begin with. But Tuesday morning, I get an email saying, you're still in queue, whatever. And at the end of it, it says, you might want to consider looking at other banking solutions. And I've been with them for almost nine years, like, you know, solid. They never really done me wrong, but, and then everybody I called said that you had to have a bank account in February business account so that we could even issue the payroll protection plan. So I was like getting fucked by like every small local bank here and really just had to work through connections to get a shoe in to where I could open an account and they would just push it through. That's brutal, man. Cause it's, well, a I'm just waiting, you know, I'm just going to wait until Wells Fargo accepts me or they run into money and wait for another grant or whatever. And then you just keep all your money in a mattress. That's what, you know, everybody I know that's successful does. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> that's it. I heard if you just yeah. get a bandana and put hundred dollar bills underneath it, it actually protects you from Corona and is a great way to save money. Or do like Walter White and just get a storage space and just get pallets of it just sitting there thinking mm. i like that right <laughs> you said conspiracy can i drop you guys a random one that's like it's not crazy it's just i think it's awesome and i was gonna maybe pivot from it if we got onto corona conspiracy stuff um, bring it bring it yeah. i love conspiracies right now this was actually on a podcast i did with like comedians and they were all, it was 
actually very difficult for me because they're very theatrical and on point all the time. I thought you were going to say funny and I was going to say, Sean, thank you for your time. (laughs) Thank you for your time. You can go. (laughs) They were were losers. Uh, Lame. No. So anyways, one of them brought up that modern art was the conspiracy is that it was, it was built off drug smuggling so that people would like, they wanted to make a legal transaction. So they would just throw these gaudy ass parties and, or like, you know, showrooms with people dressing up. And they would say that this painting with splatter on it is a million bucks. And somebody would pretend and say like, oh, this is, I'll buy it for a million bucks. And because of that, then it just became this weird community of modern art that came out of nowhere. It was just supposed to be a legal transaction for- So it was just a way to launder drug I'm a hundred percent in. Yeah, I, yeah, I like this yeah. already. Like think about like some people just want to fit the you know vibe. They go, they get invited to this party and they're like, oh, I guess I need to buy this two hundred fifty thousand dollar painting. Well, isn't because- that kind of a a bigger version of what the uh, the weed dealer started? They were like, I'll I'll sell you a hundred dollar uh, hand drawn art, and with it comes a quarter ounce of weed. Oh, back they were doing in, that D- up in, yeah. in DC. Yeah. DC, in, yeah. yeah. That is the DC yeah. uh, weed market. Yeah. You have to, you can get a gift. Here's a gift of all the weed yeah. that you, you were already looking at anyway, but I appreciate you spending a hundred dollars on this postcard. Yeah. It's a scratch and sniff. You'll get it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the simple reason of who would buy that much, like listening to an abstract person talk and make sense of how moving the paint painting is only leads you to that down that path especially when it's like a 12 by 12 white canvas with a red dot in the middle and you're like "Ooh, that sounds a million dollars yeah no 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 you said red dot right because that actually that really is a commentary on our society now giving up or so no a blue dot that's for fucking nerds (laughs) red dot i mean yeah it's a commentary on how communism is creeping into our culture it's actually really important i think we should buy that i have an art i have an art theory (laughs) if i can do it it's not fucking art (laughs) right The, the craziest thing is the most marked up perceived value that everyone purchases in certain areas all right, because of where you are or in your time of your life is a diamond. It's a fucking rock that oh, we've established. And the same, I mean, where did it come from? I mean, the same, it's the same path as the artwork. I mean, somewhere, somehow somebody said this is worth X and then it's skyrocketed from there. I, re- My- I read this, read this book called true story. It's about how narrative adds value. And cool video on it. You, you t- Google this guy, Ty Montague wrote it. And the video shows him, his team went out and bought anything under five bucks. They ended up doing mayonnaise, little mini jars of mayonnaise. And they sold them on eBay. And one had a story narrative to it, how he got it from his grandmother's before she passed, whatever. And the other yeah. one was just as is. And the one with a story sold at fifty six thousand or fifty six hundred percent higher than the regular <laughs> yeah. one. Well, but that's what, it's that's, amazing that people buy into that stuff. Yeah, that's what De Beers Diamond did. I mean, they they put the narrative behind it. Well, and- my favorite my favorite narrative sales story was I had this CJ seven that Ely had worked on with me for quite a while. This thing was an absolute disaster. Turd. Everything about that truck sucked i couldn't get it to do anything right for more than three days at a clip and i finally tried to sell it when i went to turn the key and the whole ignition column snapped and pulled out and i was just like i am so fucking done with this truck and i was like i'm putting it on on craigslist and i was like two thousand dollars for this amazing jeep cj7 lifted the brand new 35 inch tires like this thing's great Fucking no ignition column, piece of shit, sucks. No one bit. So I was like, all right, I'll drop it to $1,500, which was literally the value of the tires. Put the whole, you know, add up, nothing happened. So finally, I go on Craigslist and I said, brand new mud tires, 35 by 1250s, $1,500, comes with a Jeep for free. This Jeep, this, this, this. People, when they saw that the tires were for sale for $1,500 and then heard the story of the Jeep, were like, fuck yeah. People were coming out of the woodwork to buy the tires 
because they were the new thing. But then they heard the story. It's the same story I'd written and everything else. I just changed the headline about the tires. Humans. <clears throat> Humans. That, that works. Right. Humans. That yeah. dude showed up. He didn't ask me a single question about the fucking tires. Was it still Plassy Dip? Did he rip it off? <laughs> dude, the Plassy Dip looks so bad on my Forerunner right now. It's about time to dip that whole thing again. Ely, I'll be coming over to your house shortly. Good nice. news is you have to wear M95 masks anyway when you do Plasti Dip. So. N. N? N. See, we were doing the whole Nectar thing. I thought the N was soft yeah. now because it's a lowercase N. See that tie Still in, not M. Sean, mm. Sean got up and had to go get a drink. And I was just doing a yeah. tie-in. Heartbreaking. <laughs> Heartbreaking. Mm. What can you do? Yeah. While he's gone, I will tell one more thing, because Ely was busting my balls about this. I've decided in quarantine that I need like a thing to do. So I'm actively... Breaking? Masturbation? Okay, no, it's the third thing oh, that I'm okay. now trying okay, to do. Okay. Because the drinking and masturbation is on tilt, yeah. so <laughs> full bore. <laughs> yeah, it's a that's a whole other thing. Yeah, but so I decided that I want to learn how to do a wheelie on a bicycle because I've always been able to do like small wheelies, like little wheelies, but I can't like do an extended wheelie like down the street, and I just feel like that's a deficiency because everybody says they can do a wheelie. I can't believe you're admitting this in a public forum. Well, yes. <laughs> I feel like I feel like every dub known has been able to ride a wheelie for. How long can you ride a wheelie for? Today? Yes, today. Probably, probably not very far, but when I was a child, I mean, for fucking blocks. Okay, I I, I have a a vision. Of me as a child popping wheelies for an extended period of time. I used to be able to wheelie down the block in my mind as a kid. But now <laughs> I can't pop a wheelie for more than like two cranks around the crank. And then it like crashes down. So I've decided that during the quarantine, while all of these people are riding bikes, I'm going to learn to like do a true honest to God wheelie for a long period of time. And so I've been trying to practice on this. And so it's a good skill to work on, you know, you probably get a job yeah. doing that. <laughs> yeah. It'll be on the resume, you know, right. You'll, be, you'll become essential. <laughs> Actually, I think wheelie should be essential. Not yeah, only is it the code, learn to wheelie. <laughs> right. Look, I can't say I've made a lot of good decisions in my life. I get that this is a problem, but I want to learn. May? I want to be able to do a wheelie for at least half a block. Like that's a controlled wheelie. So I fixed up a BMX bike that I have and I've, I've like got it ready to go. And I went out the other day to give it my first shot at a wheelie. Dude, I got up a little bit, rode around. I ate shit so hard in the, in the street in front of all my neighbors who I know are doing nothing but looking out their windows like dogs because they can't go anywhere. Kennedy kids out there again. <laughs> Neighborhoods going to shit. You, <laughs> you, can, barely, time. you can barely ride a bike. So that's Man, a big ask. Uh, bikes, bikes are easy to ride. Riding them on one wheel is difficult. Dude, I ate shit. I seriously Start fucked myself up. I laid out. I tore a hole in my new pants that I'd just gotten. I fucking, I was laying there on the ground, bike all splayed you out. You ripped like, your pants? They're Jesus. Abercrombie. They already had holes in them. Right. Yeah, yeah now exactly. they're now they're hip, thank God. Yeah, but apparently wheelies are super difficult. But that is my goal. At the end of quarantine, I'll be able to wheelie around like a badass, but it's not it's not going well. Yeah. At the end, end of quarantine, everybody's, everybody's gonna go back to work and you're gonna be the only one out there. Not to, not to hey everybody. guys, look at me, Nobody's I'm wheelieing. It. Yeah, I'll be like, check me out. Sean, can you wheelie? I can wheelie, but I think you need like a a motorcycle to sustain that i can't just wheelie down the street but you see that's what i'm going for i want to be able to wheelie down the street it's good to have goals especially during these times so pick a goal you can do without anyone around and my advice would be don't have anyone around because the amount of time i'm spending on the ground like just not wanting to like scream or cry because i want to show the kids how tough you should be no it's brutal what's gonna care about the 45 year old who can do a fucking wheelie not 45. It's awkward. 
for everybody. Except everyone. I feel like it'd be cooler to dunk. It'd be yes. cool to dunk. Can you guys dunk, or have you ever been able to? No. I no. Did. You, you I was able to dunk a small ball, but I, I mean, I don't want to just be able to dunk to where it's like, eh, I did it. I want to yeah. be able to do a 360. Yeah. But, but being like, able it's to like dunk. The guys, it's like the guys who get like the alley oop and they dunk, you're like, still not the same. Like, right. you want to be able to hammer it in there. Like, exactly. Not struggle down. to do it. Yeah. Easy to do it. Senior, senior year in high school and my freshman year in college. Was Which one? The two years. Yeah, I'm confused. Both, both of them. But uh, those were the two, 18, 19, and 20. Those are the two years I could get up and just, I could dunk. Like if, do, if you're doing a layup, you can do a dunk. But that's can't. three years. Yeah. 18, 19, <laughs> uh, two 18. years. Yeah, did it from eight. To, yeah. So, okay. Had to get a running start, but I could do it. That was no, in the 80s. I could, the, the, like the rims, were, the rims were lower back in the 80s. But yeah. these are the things, these are the things we should be leaning into. It's those, those skills that we have no other time to practice, like wheelies and slam dunks. Like, get after Except it, people. The smart person would say, in this trying time, you should learn a skill that you can get a job <laughs> if you lose yes, your job. Yes, yes. Fine, but the blacksmith classes were all filled, so I'm learning to wheelie. No, they weren't. <laughs> Brennan, Brennan's trying to update his LinkedIn to do a full two blocks on a wheelie. Like, that's in his next job. Yeah, if my link, If my LinkedIn profile was a gif of me rocking a 15-second wheelie, I'd be fucking hired immediately. How do you like, think you could do that with wheelie with a bear on your shoulders? Yeah. You like the circus could use you. <laughs> this isn't going well. Hey guys, look oh, at Stu. Shit. I will say that um, <laughs> Peter shut the circus down too. <laughs> when we do ride golf carts at the river, there are a shit ton of kids that are just wheeling for a mile the whole oh, time, yeah. rocking devil horns as they roll by. I'm like that's you. badass. These kids are yeah. awesome. I know. See, I got to get cooler. That's all I'm saying. I'm I'm working on my cool factor. I'll tell you what, it's uh, it's funny with the whole quarantine thing. One, I definitely see I'm out and about, but I definitely see uh, less police officers, less law enforcement holding nine yards. And despite, you know, Troy flicking me off, I'm going to tell the story. Um, <laughs> but going over to Brennan's house the other day, there was the whole um street bike guys just up and down robius by your house oh I yeah four or five times popping wheelies doing endos on their bikes doing whatever and there was not a soul around to even concern yourself and the whole time you were thinking man those guys would be cool if they were on bicycles <laughs> exactly it's like there's there's brendan's goal get these guys on a bicycle yeah <laughs> but yeah it's Said like no one ever I'm out there, you know, for those of us that get out and about and are driving around like Troy and myself, it is, it's eerie weird at the times of day when you see nothing and usually it's just slammed. So, oh know. yeah. I look, yeah, I'd we, be lying if I didn't say if I, I've increased my average speed a solid 10 miles an hour wherever I go. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, everybody, because cops don't want to pull you over. The last thing they want to do is lean into your window and h hold your dirty ID. So they're yeah. all like, uh, that's acceptable. We went and from the whole time uh, in my head. I'm, the whole time in my head, I'm singing America. Fuck, fuck yeah. 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 <laughs> I still I'm hate whipping it so down much. 90 miles an hour down Hall Street. I love it. So, yeah. Sean, we've been doing this for two hours and these people pay nothing. So I'm not going to we can't give them any more. It's ridiculous. He got here three hours ago. Yeah, Sean's been with <laughs> us true. for three hours. That's a fact. 7.30, so, I was on. And I respect you for that. Sean, when so the sale, the big sale, 42% off, that's only on 420, or does that uh, work across other days? What's the deal on that? We're doing it only 420, then anybody who's on our email list will get early access to the code. So 419. Nice. So to all the listeners out there that typically rely on the ITPH code to get 30% off an extra sunglasses, this is one of the few times that I would actually say don't. Lean in and get the 42% off. That's the best deal going right it's now. It's like 10 more percent or something. I don't know. I, it's 10-ish. Uh, yeah. But I, would, I know I'm going to be ordering a pair. I'm going to get those Tides in the black and blue. I'm psyched about those. So 
I'm going to reach out. I'm going to get a pair of those. And anyone else out there that, that can, this is a great time to support someone who has literally always supported inside the pallet house from the time we started until now. And this is a, this is a difficult time for any small business, but this one is, uh, is close to home with us. So please do head over to nectarsunglasses.com, order some sunglasses. Look, at some point you're going to get out of that house and you don't want to look like a schmuck. So get some good sunglasses. This get is some the time. gear. Get the flag. The flag's the dopest flag you'll ever fly. The koozies are only $3. If you're ever looking for a way to bump up your order to get to that free shipping, might I recommend koozies? Just saying. <laughs> you guys are killing it. No, I appreciate it. <laughs> no, thank you guys for letting me on. I know you, this is, uh, I don't know, how many years have you been doing this now? Six? Five. Yeah, five, six. Five years. Well, I think this is April now, right? Or is this Yeah, Mar- we're starting March? our sixth year. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's been, I appreciate you guys letting me on and coming into this world. It's always nice to do podcasts that aren't regimented out and certain topics. I like the free flowing element of it. And yeah, we have have no idea what the fuck we're doing. You're right. You guys all have your own (laughs) unique personality. It goes goes super well together and I love sitting in. I wish I could be there with you guys in person. Um, Hopefully we'll get back there one day. In due time. Honestly, you're our first virtual guest, but I thought let's go with something that we understand, you know, something (laughs) that we know, Sean. So I appreciate you letting us experiment with this, but yeah, man, thank you so much for your support over the years to the podcast and uh hopefully the listeners do reach out on 420 and, and play some orders and get you uh you know get you some sales we'll take it i know i'll be doing it i'll be getting some time man yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a a good year damn it one way or another the front half has been absolute trash uh, dumpster fire would be too light of a word for 2020 but we'll hopefully things will get better so thank you, Sean. I really do appreciate all the support and you you uh, hanging out. Hopefully everyone will head on over there. After this, though, you can always get 30% off using the ITPH code. I do want to send out to uh, send a shout out to young Jimmy. I know it's been a rough week for you, man. I'm sorry for your loss. So that's the second week in a row I've had to do that at the end of a podcast, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in all the time. Please do head over to Nectar Sunglasses support the cause and thanks everybody for listening if you haven't had a chance to reach out to us on the uh email you can always send us topics at inside the pallet house at gmail.com we're always accepting money on venmo at troy what's that inside the pallet house that's the one or you can always communicate with ely over at at itph podcast on instagram and twitter we'll be talking to y'all next week thank you guys so much for your time cheers Shout out to my neighbor, Kathy, who's a listener. No idea. I appreciate it. Peace out. That was a really good podcast, don't you think? (laughs) 